so happy to be back here at the Bruto. I think we're all in the same boat this year with COVID. We really have some limited time in gates. With two feet of snow in 48 hours, not all the racers could get here in time for course inspection. This wonderful night of racing couldn't have ended any crazier. Last night was a night race at Hallison Hill. Made it into the finals against Rob Cohn and kind of risked it all. I could hear him moaning and groaning. Ah! Our champion, Killington's very own Rob Cohn. Sorry, Rob. Monday's a whole new ball game. All 16 of the racers are ready to send it in the second race of the season, the Moose Barrows Trophy. I'm John Franklin, CEO of the World Pro Ski Tour. We're back in Steamboat, Colorado for the second race of the 221 season. Last night, we were at Howlson Hill. We had snowy conditions, cold weather. Tomorrow, we are expecting clear weather and cold conditions. So for the second race, we've got not only the big boys competing under the lights, but the Alpine Bank Junior Kids Race. We'll knock that all out starting tomorrow over at Howlson Hill. Steamboat. 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 There's a huge legacy of great ski racers coming out of Steamboat, and it's great to have a lot of juniors that are having fun and seeing these legends, seeing elite ski racing. Steamboat has a phenomenal history in ski racing, and one of the great legends of skiing, Billy Kidd, works here as the head of skiing at Steamboat. A lot of people stay inside during the winter. People in Steamboat here want to get outside and slide down the hill. The hill, the hill, the hill. Here at Steamboat, they've got one of the biggest junior programs. I think they had Club of the Year the last few years. They've got tons of Olympians from Steamboat. Go, 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 go. As far as getting in front of the kids, which we will do this weekend, interacting with them, kind of passing on the knowledge of what we've learned, and just getting them fired up on skiing because, you know, it it can be a tough sport. It's a, it can be mentally draining. But just to remind them, hey, this is fun. We've had some of the best and most legendary skiers in the world, like Moose Barrows, that have come through this racing circuit. We were very lucky that you could do anything you needed to do with a pair of skis on and you had great people around you to teach you to get to the future and the way to the Olympics. Today's conditions are completely different than on Saturday. As opposed to two feet of snow, we've got sunshine and cold weather. The course is iced up. In addition, we've got 50 mile an hour winds. Yeah, so the first day the snow was, especially for the qualifying runs, it was, it was definitely soft, which is not my forte. I'm from the East Coast, which is all quite a bit of ice. There was a little bit of something firm underneath the snow, which was beneficial for us as racers, something firm to push on, but it wasn't the cleanest and it kind of dished out. So there was more of like a bobsled track down the whole course. Today, hopefully, after the sun baked it for a whole day, it was warm yesterday, like 40 degrees, and I think it locked up last night. So I'm excited to get to the hill today and check out the surface. It's not really my cup of tea when it comes to soft, super soft snow. I like it hard. We have a great, beautiful day out there today. Uh, I think it should be a little easier to attack and kind of run your own line rather than trying to 
work what the hell it gives you. Killington's very own Rob Cohn, our champion. At the 108th Winter Carnival, everybody! I had a pretty good day by facing some fast guys through the final two rounds and even a good final with Garrett Driller. I had another good matchup with him and came away with the win here. Made it into the finals against Rob Cohn and we've met there in the past and pushed myself a little bit too hard, came through the bottom of the course, really trying to push for that finish line and beat him and I overextended and ended up going right through that last gate. Took a nice face digger through the finish line and we got some good footage of it. I really tried to stay focused on my side of the course, so I couldn't really see much of what Garrett was doing, but he, I could hear him moaning and groaning his way along, <laughs> along to the side of me. The so crashing on the Pro Tour is actually fairly common. Um, Thomas Wilson, who's one of the competitors, is actually, he's a, a perennial uh, possibility of just exploding at some point. Uh, hey, if we're gonna have any good crashes, Wilson or him, so. <laughs> We were watching something the other night, and he's he's on like some YouTube top 30 sports clips for crashes. So he's had a couple good ones where you know he's catching a gate off the jump and tomahawking, and uh, or getting close to the finish and packing it into the netting. So we'll leave that to Thomas Wilson. <laughs> if Thomas Wilson can't crash, I will do it for you. Tucker Marshall was able to pull the string, straighten it out after the third bump, and bump Nolan Casper, our first big upset of the night. So our first race was two days ago, Saturday, and uh, unfortunately I didn't do as well as I'd hoped. I think I, a little rust to knock off with uh, the first race of the year, but I think the whole tour, all the all the athletes were, were super excited about getting back in the start gate. We'll see if Nolan does well. I just lent him one of my tuning machines, and I think that Michael and Garrett are still feeling pretty hot, and hopefully they have some good runs. High hopes that I could pull this one off against Rob, um, but turns out can't win them all, but you can always have fun. I think it'll be a totally different race and totally different event on Monday, and that's because the course will be totally reset. Yesterday I had some good skiing going on. I wanted to go faster and I just took a little too much risk and got jetted out of the course. So I got some adjustments to make for Monday. And just go in and attack and fight. That's what I hope to do tomorrow. I think, yeah, weather is good. Slope looks better, definitely. And I think I'm free to go to send it. I really just try to keep it straight and stay in my lane. Sorry, Rob. Monday's a whole new ball game. At Toughshed, the safety of our customers and workers is our first priority. Toughshed.com allows you to learn more, design buildings, and even complete a purchase safely from home. Virtual site checks, as well as design consults, are available. Our construction teams are working to safely manufacture and install buildings with extra precautions around distancing, cleanliness, and never entering your home. Homeowners today have pressing needs that go beyond storage, like a home office, room for the kids, and space to relax. Address your building needs safely and easily at toughshed.com. We're back at Vail, Colorado at the 1971 World Professional Ski Racing Championships. Moose Barrows from Steamboat Springs going against his fellow countryman Spider Savage, leading money winner on the Pro Tour. There is Moose Barrows on the left with Spider Savage. They're about to get on the left. My name is Jim Barrows, named by Bob Bietti to be called a moose. And we're standing at Howlson Hill, where I grew up from the time I was a baby to graduating to go to the University of Colorado to ski. Jim, he's quite a competitor. He's raced stock cars, he's an engineer, he flies planes, and here he is really flying down this mountain. And there's Billy, first American man to win a silver medal in ski racing in the Olympic Games. We were in the 68 Olympics together just a few short decades ago. You must remember his classic spill that he took in the Winter Olympic Games at Grenoble. And Moose Barrows almost beat Jean-Claude Keeley for the gold medal in downhill. You just got to just go as fast as you absolutely can. Barrows got out of that starting gate pretty fast. He's really hungry for a victory, and he'd really like it over his ex-teammate Savage. When I grew up here, we had the jumping here. We had all the events we did through town. But we had no television, 
And we live a long way from anywhere. You made one trip to Denver a year. But it looks like Barrows might have the lead, Jim. Moose really shot ahead of that starting gate. Moose Barrows is in the lead on the right-hand side of your screen. Could be an upset here. Those were the good days of life. We were all involved in trying to make it through the winter before the summertime comes and we all have to go back to work. Uh-oh. Up, and there he goes, off the course. Moose Barrows is out of it. Spider Savage now automatically becomes the winner of this match. And everybody tried everything. We did street events, we had horse races, and we had all the skiing events where we tried to see who could go the farthest off the jump, who could get the fastest down the hill without making a turn. And this year, we've included the World Pro Skiing Tour. Okay, so we run again. We've had world champions on this very hill, and we learned to ski slalom downhill as our youth, as we grew up. And that gave all of us that came through high school, college, a link for all the kids and adults as they grow old in the skiing industry to the real world where we can make a living and continue to have skiing a part of our life. Barrows with a narrow lead, that could be the 8-100s. Up and down he goes. Moose had just gone out in front again, but he fell and it's all over. Unfortunately, we've seen him a good many times covered with snow. He just goes so flat out that he's bound to fall a lot, I suppose. Yes, Jim, but he really put up a battle against Savage. Only one man can win, can be the king of the hill. To do it, he has to win two races in a row. This race is called the Moose Sparrows Trophy. We're looking forward to a sunshiny day under the lights tomorrow night at Howlson Hill. I'm not so nervous around the media day. You know, I think that one of the points of it is to kind of share who you are as a person with the public. Uh, they can kind of see behind the helmet and goggles. And so I don't really feel the need to, you know, rehearse who I am. I, I kind of like going off the cuff and having answers, bad or good. I dig it. I think that it's fun to, you know, share who you are, share your points of view, teach them a little bit about yourself, and you know, hopefully that will gain some fans. Hope it doesn't lose some fans. <laughs> I'm Jake Jacobs. I'm from Glens Falls, New York, and I've been racing on the Pro Tour since 2016, I believe. I had a really good day yesterday. I went up against Robert Cohn, and uh, he eliminated me, but I was kind of happy he went on to win. But even then, you know, if I didn't match up against him and it was someone else, I would have to race him anyway. So why not just go for it first round? Colorado is one of my favorite places to train early season. Believe it or not, I do off-road unicycling, which is fun for balance and things like that. And uh, so I think my mom, when I was young, had a unicycle. And then I was like, yeah, hey, I'd like to try that. I think it, it's enormously helpful. It's good with the core. It's like a fixed gear. So if you're going up or downhill, it's still a workout. Monday. I'm not gonna change too much. I'm gonna put this race behind me. I'm gonna go for it. I, I like to tell myself I'm gonna win, even though you know I may be an underdog, but if, if you're thinking you're gonna win, then I think you're gonna at least do pretty well. My name is Andrea Pizzini. I'm originally from Italy. I spent my last three years in Alabama. That's why I have this accent right now and it's my first season on the World Pro Tour. So now I'm in Spokane, Washington, working in a private practice as a periodontist. I specialize in dental implant, bone graft, and gum graft. So basically the stuff that uh, you don't want to come and see me in the office because if you're going to come and see me, it means that you're in trouble. My name is Robbie Kelly. I'm from Starksboro, Vermont. Um, I'm skiing for Killington Mountain School and racing here for Redneck Racing. I've done a few World Pro Ski Tour events, but uh, I went back to school last year and I was, I was playing college football actually and worked my way up, started getting some playing time, got a couple catches at wide receiver and then broke my arm in the fourth game. So I had a pretty brief college football career, but it was fun while it lasted. 
I'm going to graduate this spring, so I think my football career, sadly, is over officially. This is my official retirement from the sport of football. Oh, fumble! My name is Micha Kürner, I'm from Slovenia, and I'm racing out of Ski Club Bled Slovenia. <laughs> in a way, yeah, I'm kidding. But yeah, no, uh, I'm a coach. I work as a coach in Ski Club Vale. Slovenia has been a known for a alpine skiing country, so I'm not super popular because I did not win the way they expected me to, but hopefully I'll do a second career here and I'll get more popular <laughs> with, with that. It's pretty exciting to me beating some of these guys. I really liked beating Ted last year on this hill. It feels good to actually beat them. And even Michael. This is Michael Ankeny, and here's some golf tips. One thing that I've been working on this last summer is when you're bringing the club head back, really keeping it in close to the body and following through with hands high. Get this into out motion. It's important to practice those mechanics so that when you get back out onto the green and fairway, you can really dial it in and hopefully earn a couple beers from your buddies on side bets. Last year was the inaugural Alpine Bank Pro and Junior Program. I was working with kids who ranged anywhere from eight years old to 16 years old. And we were we formed like little teams. So I had, you know, the Michael Ankeny team. I forget, we named ourselves like the Spicy Tacos or something like that. We're giving them tips in the start gate, how to time the corral's opening up, how to prep for a jump coming up. Like, you need to go off with a flat ski. If you go off on your edge, you're gonna get popped off and blown up. And it's super fun because you do get that, you know, face-to-face, -face, now mask-to-mask -mask, uh, interaction with the pros. We're the pros. And to have the kids be exposed to that level of skiing, and I'm sure they get it quite a bit of knowledge from their coaches, but to have someone talk to them about skiing that's still in it, I think is really rewarding. I hope I can coach them up and show them what he or she needs to get doing to have a good fast run and, and beat everyone else. Here is a place situated off the map of ordinary, a place that is independent, free-spirited, and intimate in scale. A place that since its first lift was installed over 60 years ago has strived to stay true to its roots while growing better rather than bigger. This vision for the future has helped make us the first ski resort in the world to earn B Corp certification. It's a symbol of where we're headed and what we stand for. We hope you will join us. I'm going to win this year. Runner up isn't good enough. In the past, I've had knee issues that have kept me from performing my best. I've seen doctors and specialists across this country and I've had MRIs. Still, my knee holds me back. Until DNA vibe. Using my DNA Vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. So I spend more time out on the hill. This year, I'm going to win. You know, I talked to a lot of people in the race yesterday, and I think all of our backs are hurting a little bit. This <laughs> is kind of the uh, old man sport right now, and um, definitely a day off was needed. and warming up right now for day two. As you get older, you start thinking yourself as old, and then you look over your shoulder, and Nolan's sitting there like, he's, he's old. 
So I'm definitely, I think, the oldest guy at this race. I know we had a few older guys last year with the pandemic and, and some of the World Cup guys that are stuck in Europe, uh, not able to come back before World Champs. He said he was 31 at this race. That's pretty old for a ski racer. Uh, being the older guy and racing against, you know, athletes that when I was racing World Cups, they were just coming up, you know, through high school and, and uh, on the development team. I think it's, I feel like the guy with all, with all the wisdom. So Nolan's definitely grandpa, but he's still out here having fun. He's still, he's still kicking ass. We've got clear skies, we have sunshine today, it's getting colder, the course is gonna firm up, the guys will be racing on ice. I like the ice, because it's fast. And ice, if your skis are sharp, you can, it's a really lively feel. Perfect. Today looks good, sun is shining. All right, we're good. Perfect for a race. I'm excited for it and yeah, I tried to win. That berm down there that we had last year, it might be a little faster, so we might want to set it out a half panel. Let's check that out. Perfect. We're here, aren't we? Oh, Thomas, you dirty dog. Today, sun's out, melting snow a little bit. Hope it will freeze. Hope they will not broom. You know, my skiing's there, I know I'm fast enough to win this thing, and I just gotta focus on myself and not worry about the people next to me. Just trying to take it run by run and work through all the tired backs that all of us racers have. For me, I think it's gonna be nice not to have a seven hour drive before so that I can kind of prep a little bit more, get some warm up runs in, get a proper inspection, and then really try to execute in the qualifications. 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 In my sport, seeing where you're going is very important. These Rex goggles are awesome. I see my competitors behind me and really know when I need to turn on the gas and put them in the dust. Change the lenses at night to low light. Spherical lenses, huge vision, great lenses, great shape, great goggles. Each goggle purchase includes any two lenses of your choice at rex.com. Snow looks awesome though. Definitely locked up. Should have a nice uh, bluebird day to start and right into the night with some clear skies, hopefully. We are getting a word from the top. They are ready to go. The athletes, all 16, ready to take their first of four qualifying runs. I really try to focus and really hone in on the intensity I need to compete against the elite racers. Our main focus is making sure our bodies are working properly. We still have the flexibility we need. Our legs have enough juice in them to get us down all the runs we have to take. ability to adapt. You hit some rocks, you hit some ice, depending on you know how the hill is and uh, you just have to you have to make those adaptations on the fly. Honestly I've never had a lot of success on this hill. It doesn't really suit my skiing because it's kind of steep and out being a speed skier I'm a lot better at generating speed on kind of flat courses, especially on these short slalom skis. Richard ready! I think the track's gonna continue to firm up for the next race we have here. And I really like a consistent, smooth, hard surface. It's not the best for recreational skiers, but as a racer, you like a smooth, consistent surface. It gives you something to really push on. We got one good start, so let's get signed for the day. Nice. No, it isn't. You suck and everyone knows it. Well, probably will, but <laughs> nice to get an affirmation that I could do it. 
Yeah, potentially. For the Pro Tour, this is definitely the, the gnarliest hill we have. It's you know very steep out of the start. The jumps are pretty big, and it's it's cool. There's a lot of the courses are just straight down the hill. This one has a little curve to the left. It's definitely the coolest hill we have on the circuit. It's crazy. The uh, cowboy town delivered for sure. The more runs you take, the more tired you get. As you're more fatigued, the runs are really adding up. They matter more and more, so you really need to dig deep in the end. As I finish runs and my body's hurting and, and guys are ready to go again, it, uh, it makes me pull a lot more out than, than I probably would have otherwise, but it's, I don't think anyone pokes too much fun at me, so it's not too bad being that old. You stretch, you do your preparation for the race, you should have a good chance to show the rest of the competitors that you're out there to win, you're out there to take home the money. Richard, ready! Off of that third jump and you're on the good course, you can have the advantage. Once you're on the course, any number of things can happen and, and, and it's truly one of the most variable sports in the world. Going out of the gate, it's the steepest part and it's just, in a way, the most technical part. And then the first jump gives you the most speed, so you're entering the middle section with crazy speed. Once you get in the start gate, you're for sure focused, but the anticipation factor for me, sometimes I psych myself out a little bit, so instead of psyching myself out, I'll psych others out. <laughs> Robert Cohn picked right up where he left off as a dominant racer on the tour. But tonight, tonight things could be a little bit different. With the finals under the lights, all 16 of the racers are ready to send it full throttle in the second race of the season, the Moose Barrows Trophy. I love having a 15-step commute um, to my office. <laughs> it makes it super easy in the morning. I loved working with Tough Shed because I could get the really nice office space I wanted for a price that worked for me. Very easy to finish out the interior of the shed. The studs are where they need to be for an interior finish. And it helps me to really disconnect from, from work than when I go inside. I love the, the separation between the two. So I really had an easy process with Tough Shed. Growing up in New Jersey is definitely hard. 
I definitely had kids that I went to school with that I played soccer with, but none of them skied with me. So I had two very different lives. One was out in the mountain with, with those friends and teammates, and the other one was you know, my day-to-day -day being in school and, and doing other sports. But coming out of New Jersey, I had to be really deliberate about finding someone who can help you progress, and then as I've gotten older, being that person to give back. I grew up at Squaw Valley with wonderful coaches and all that, but I never really had the chance, the opportunity to have like an older athlete come down to the U16 level with the pre fis kids and really kind of share the, the tips and tricks that, I mean, I'm 24 now. I've gone through this sport for way longer than a lot of people. I know all the mental ups and downs. You go through all of this, and it's, it's really nice to have someone as a athlete to share your, your thoughts with or to have a question with that a coach that's been doing it for so long, they still might not have the right answer or the right way to speak to the kid that's actively racing. A lot of these little kids that you see out here get a chance to race in the Alpine Bank Cup and it's exciting because they're going to get coached by the pro racers and they're dreaming about going to the Olympics and World Championships and on to the World Pro Ski Tour. Every turn on the blue course is flat. Guys, keep that in mind. You're going to want to keep that shoulders, start at the shoulders, then the hips, then the knees. Keep everything level when you're coming around these followers, right? For all these athletes, I really want to have them find their own confidence so they can attack the course and be aggressive. So I want all these kids to see how that can help them find their own consistency. Well, I told them how to use these starts and to focus on their own race, and, um, not worry about the person next to them because that doesn't matter, and lay it all out there. Having someone there to really push you and give you guidance is super important. And it's just important here as it is anywhere else, even though the kids here have much more exposure to great athletes in winter sports. All right, should we take a look at the course? Yeah. 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 After you pull out of the start, it's really important to try to get onto the snow as much as possible. A lot of people will pull like this with their tips up and then catch air. You don't want to catch air. So as you pull out, you want to roll, get onto the snow as soon as possible. These kids are so lucky to get coached by these racers here. And they listen and they'll copy and they'll they'll just they'll just see how much fun this is to be a ski racer. I don't really have any crazy mindfulness techniques, but I think as long as they're breathing, smiling, and picturing themselves having fun and making sure they're having fun, they should be doing pretty well. I really hope that the juniors that I'll be working with see that I'm just like them. I'm trying to organize my day and just have the best race event that I can. It's pretty cool having the kiddos out here. I never got to do anything like this when I was little, so it's pretty exciting. Using the gates and just the duel in general is a fun thing to have. It's a fun format, something they're just kind of getting exposed to and something that really, you know, unless you're racing World Cup, but it's not the exact same. I think this dual racing format's super cool, and especially in the U.S. where a lot of our big sporting events are, playoffs are all bracket style, so you get the head-to-head -head component, and I think that's something that the younger generation is really going to enjoy, and I think is going to take off in the future. At the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club, we train, compete, build confidence, set goals, and achieve them. Alpine Bank gives a lot in our community. They make sure kids get the opportunity to be champions. They support us with scholarships, bibs, the ACE program, Athlete of the Week, and my favorite, the Alpine Bank World Pro Ski Tour Junior Challenge. I will always remember racing and being mentored by ski racers like Ted Ligeti. Thank you, Alpine Bank! Everything is training, you know. I know all the other racers are pretty fatigued. I know how the system works and I train hard on it. It's really the drive to be successful. I know it's worth it to make it all the way to the finals and be in the big final. It's just racing. Nobody knows how the result will be. The average viewers, they don't see what I feel. I feel, I feel, I feel. Sometimes you get up and you just feel it. 
If you're in a starcade, your focus is totally on your run. Think about the tactics and the way you're skiing. Think about the flow from one turn to the other, 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 other. When you're pushing things to your limit, it's relying on your training. It's relying on instinct, where to go and where to make your turn. You see the other guy next to you, you're trying to push it down and go straighter, that's going to force mistake. Feeling fired up, feeling good. We are all professionals, you know, so it's not a big deal. I think the youth race is super cool and super important and, and something I wish existed when I was coming up. I'm really psyched that it's back. Our kids are great. They are on their way to the Olympics, the World Pro Championships. They're great. Good luck. Can I get my picture taken with you? Does anybody in this group want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated magazine? Sorry. One, two, three. My motto is calm but determined. Oh, Ski like you train. Let's go! <laughs> I'm eliminated, but I still learned how to play. If you win this round against the other team, then we're in the big show. We're in the finals. So you guys are ripping. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let's bring out Betsy Wood from Alpine Bank. Betsy, great to have you back here. Great, thank you for your support for these young athletes. This has been fantastic. All right, in the number two spot, Team Slyball. Let's go with the number one spot, Team Garrett Driller. Is this an omen for tonight for Driller? Thank you, Alpine Bank. Thank you, Alpine that wraps it up for the young guys, the big dogs, going back to the top, 7 o'clock start, the finals here at the Moose Barrels Cup. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open and keeps you in it. I'm Alex Burinos. We're here at Surefoot um, at the uh, Gondola Plaza in Steamboat Springs. And um, I'm competing at the World Pro Tour down at Howison Hill for the Moose Barrows Cup. And, uh, you know, fortunately I had my custom shirt foot liners while I was in there because getting back in a race boot was a little bit painful after some time out of it and kind of saved me. Take a foot off. And then if you get a side view, you can really see the height of it. All these different pegs are measuring and making a cat image or a capture of the bottom of the foot. That capture is then translated, this is like a topo map, so it's not pressure, they're heights. I started coming here when I was eight or nine years old, like 15 years ago, something like that. Right when Surefoot first started, and started up on the Growing Pains program, and definitely got my money's worth out of that one, and I've been coming here ever since because I loved it so much. The sky was blue today, and it's a clear evening here in Steamboat, a perfect evening for a ski race. Tonight, racers have another shot at winning big at the second annual Moose Barrows Trophy. Moose is a Steamboat native and came up through the ski racing ranks, eventually competing on the big stage before jumping onto the Pro Tour in 1971. To have your name on one of his trophies is a privilege that only one racer has earned so far. But after tonight, there will be two. And I wonder who that will be.
Red course ready! Yep. Blue course ready! Yep. This is ready! And we will start our round of 16. Two runs each, they'll take one on each course. The fastest combined time moves on. The very strong Kamalander gets the jump on the Italian. Down the pitch he goes. It's a new day, new race, looks good. Much different than, than the race before. The slope looks much better, it's uh, out surface. Today I'm feeling a little more confident. I had one really good qualifier run and my feet are a little more under me and I'm ready to rumble for today. I'm looking to improve on my starts tonight and uh, just keep focused and try to put two good runs together. A lot of energy in the snow. It's a lot firmer than uh, earlier. Red course ready. ready. Blue course ready. Race is ready. I'm just gonna stay consistent and keep the speed up. Unbelievable save, though, Garrett out there. Look at him. He's putting some sideways. It looks like Jacobs is going to pull it off at the finish line and Jacobs going to cross first. Up, and Garrett Triller here in the round of 16. If someone makes a mistake, it's super hard to make it back. I mean, I tried my darndest and everyone here is a good enough skier to hold off. It's like I said in the beginning, it's, it is rodeo. I, I would need a hat and boots. All right, feeling good. I'll try my best this time. Here we go. Cohen and Jacobs. Hopefully I'll get to the finish before he does. Cohen, despite the bad back, he's, he's warming up a little bit, Lou. Yeah, Saturday was good. It was good to be back out here competing again. Uh, got a little unlucky in the round of 16. Washed down a few white claws, and now I'm feeling ready to go. Ah, come on. You gotta move, dude. You gotta move. Come on! Go, bud. You got this. The snow today is a lot more consistent. We have less soft spots, less holes and bumps. It's going to be a lot tighter racing. The courses are a little closer in time. Camelante looking strong. And he will move into round four. The semifinals goes Camelante. Getting after it all night. Simone, breakthroughs Camelander, Robert Cohn. Yeah, the champion of the Druid Slalom, I mean, you know, what I can say, let's get ready to rumble. Thomas Wilson, Michael Ankeny, these guys have been battling hard. Physically, I know I'm a younger athlete out here with old man Michael here. He knows I gave him one on Saturday, so I know he's shaking in his boots. Thanks, Thomas. You're going to look even cuter when I'm looking down. It's going all right. Simone's got a few more runs than me, so I'm trying to get used to the soft snow, the track, and set up some of these turns. The only way to win the race is to end it. Full speed from the first run on, and yeah. I'm excited for it.
Thomas might be a young sprite, but I just turned 30. Just qualified for old man strength. Well, let's not blow it this time, huh? Plus, I got the uh, mental edge. I might look out of control, but it's all zen up here, baby. Ah, oh, I gotta stop blowing it. Moral of the story is, you're on that top. We got Michael Ankeny, Robert Cohn. Guys, big showdown here. You ready for party? Here we go, the finals of the Moose Barrows Trophy. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Racers ready. You got what it takes, Robert? I hope so. I'm really only one year younger than him. I know he's a January birthday, but I'm getting old too. Yeah, I think, you know, both of us, we're hurting, but we're loving it. It is so fun. I'm trying to do a run by run, so uh, hopefully we'll have a good one now. Out on course goes Ankeny with that half a second advantage. Dropping down the red course side. We know the blue is quicker. Can Ankeny put it together to upset Cone here today? Cone with a little bit of a back drop. Oh, Ankeny throws the shoot! No! Can't end like this! Oh, that's oh. such a bummer. Welcome to the official award ceremony for the Moose Barrows Trophy here in Steamboat Springs. And I'd like to start this off with the CEO of the World Pro Ski Tour, John Franklin. Hey Chad, thank you very much. What a great day of racing, a great couple of days of racing in Steamboat, Colorado. I'd like to thank John Nolting and Kevin Sankey from the Steamboat Winter Sports Club and Halson Hill, City of Steamboat. Also, of course, our sponsors, and all our friends that show up, our TV networks, and of course, the racers, fans, and followers. Thank you, everyone. Oh, we got a true legend in our presence tonight, Moose Barrows. Thank you, John, and what a wonderful night and wonderful show tonight. And Rob, you're starting to make this a common deal. You may become a resident if you keep winning like this. For the second year in a row, thanks for winning the Moose Trophy. Thank you, Moose, love seeing you down here. And our champion and winner once again today, from Killington, Vermont, Robert Cohn. Rob, your thoughts, please, on making it two for two here in Steamboat Springs. It's got to feel good. It feels good. The Pro Tour and Steamboat and Howlson gave me way too many runs. A little fatigued, and I don't want Michael to hear it, but that was a little freebie. <laughs> Woo. Thanks, everyone. I mean, I made a solid step onto the podium. I knocked on the door of the fastest dual skiers in the world, and that was actually the first trip battle against Rob. And, uh, I saw him right next to me, like uh, I felt him. I was close and he made also a little, some mistakes. He was so stable. He was shaking a little bit around, so that showed me that he is also a bit like uh, under pressure. And yeah, I'm excited for the next one, can't wait. Had about a 0.5 second advantage going into uh, the second run, but two gates before the first jump, my binding broke off. Hit a rut, hit a hole, and the entire plastic piece just snapped off. Blew a shoe, game over. But all good, you know. I'll uh, I'll be a little sore tomorrow, but I'll live to live to live another day. We'll uh, see you at the next stop. <laughs> 